So let's pick up where we left off. Um, we're still talking about, int we're still introducing quadratics. We're still getting used to what a quadratic is, what it looks like, how to find the parts of it, all that good stuff. I want to talk about graphing first. If you were in second period, you saw some of this in class today, but if you were in third, you have not, and so you really want to pay attention to this part. Um, if you got this during second period, you can, you can fast forward a little bit, but I want to make sure that uh, third period is understanding how to graph. So every time you graph a quadratic, you, there are four basic steps you have to follow. Number one, you have to find and sketch the line of symmetry, which you, you will remember is this equation, x equals the opposite of b over 2a. So we're going to take this um, equation right here, and we're going to find the axis of symmetry. The opposite of b is going to be 2, and then 2a is going to be 2 times negative 1 half. Well, if I multiply those together, there goes my pen acting funny again. I end up with 2 over, well, 2 times negative 1 half is negative 1, which just gives me negative 2. So my line of symmetry is going to be at x equals negative 2, which is right here. And so I'm sketching really poorly, but it's this line right here on my graph. Then I have to find and plot the vertex. Well, it, the x value of my vertex is exactly the same as my line of symmetry because my line of symmetry crosses right through the middle, the vertex is smack in the middle, and so the x coordinate of the vertex is always going to be the same as the line of symmetry. That's why we find it first. Since I know the x coordinate, if I want to find the y coordinate, I can just plug it into here and find out what y equals. So I'm going to plug in negative 2 into this. So I end up with negative 1 half times negative 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2 plus 1. Well, negative 2 squared is 4, and then 4 times negative 1 half goes right back to negative 2. And then negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, and then plus 1, I'll just do the math, negative 2 plus 4 is 2, plus 1 gives me 3, so my vertex should be at negative 2 comma 3. Change my color so that this shows up really well. So at negative 2, 3 is my vertex. Now I have to make a table of values using two values of x that are larger than the x value of the vertex and then plot them on the graph. I would recommend not going too much larger than the x value of the vertex. In this case, the x value of my vertex is negative 2, so two numbers that are larger than that, let's go 0 and 1. They're both bigger than negative 2, they're both going to be really easy to work with. Then if I want to find the y coordinates for these, I do the same thing I did here and I plug these number, these x values into my equation. So let's do the zero first. I have negative one half times zero squared minus two times zero plus one. Well, this is going to be zero, this is going to be zero, and that's going to be one. Well, that just gives me one. So y when x is zero is one. Then if x is 1, I plug it into here, so I have negative 1 half times 1 squared minus 2 times 1 plus 1. Well, 1 squared is 1 times negative 1 half is negative 1 half minus 2 plus 1. Well, since order doesn't really matter here, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 2, and then negative 2 and negative 1 half Yes, I'm going to use my calculator. This comes out to negative one and a half, and I'm just going to write it as negative 1.5. That will be easier to graph. So these now are points that go on my graph. So I'm going to scroll back up so you can see my pretty picture here. Switch back to the red so it shows up. The first point I want to plot is zero and one. So I have zero and one. And then the next one is one and negative one and a half. This gives me half of my parabola. It's kind of an ugly thing, but if you use symmetry, because that's the next step that I have, it says use symmetry, plot two other points on the curve. Since I know that this line, that I, the purple one I drew, cuts this directly in half, I can just use symmetry and what I know about, you know, cutting things in half to draw the rest of it. So if this point is right here, then there is a similar point on the other side over here so that I have symmetry. And then this point is right here, and so when I connect them, I end up with a parabola. And so this is the graph of that function, and this is how you graph it. Find the line of symmetry, plot the find the vertex, and then pick two other points on the graph 
find them and plot them and then use symmetry to find the other two you have your you have your quadratic the good news is you won't have to graph by hand very often but you do need this to complete your homework for tonight so moving on we're now going to do we're going to introduce um i do apologize we are going to introduce quadratics day two so now we're going to move on to day two of quadratics, and it's more of the same kind of stuff. We're going to um, just talk about quadratics and their parts and their pieces and the things we need to know. So first we're going to do multiple representations, which you have done um, with linear functions. Now we're going to do these same things with quadratic functions. So here is the function, y minus 2x squared equals 8x minus 3. The first thing that you need to know is this right here is standard form of a quadratic function. It has to be y equals and then it's ax squared plus bx plus c. I can't graph anything unless it is in standard form, unless it is written as y equals. So the first thing I have to do with this is get the y all by itself. Well, if I want y all by itself, I've got to get rid of this minus 2x squared, so I'm going to add 2x squared to both sides. And then I'm just going to make sure I write it in the correct order so that it looks like this. So I end up with y equals 2x squared comes first, plus 8x minus 3. This way I can find my a, b, and c really easy. So I'm going to use this function and I'm going to come up with a table that goes with this that matches my, my function. Um, if I know the x values and I want to know the y values, all I have to do is plug these x values into this equation in order to get them. Now we're going to, I'm going to do the first one with you and then I'm going to have you pause and we're going to fill in and have you fill in the rest of it and you can come back and check just to be sure. This, this is just going to take way too much time if we do all of these values um, by hand all at once. So I'm going to plug in negative 4 into this equation. So you have and I'm going to write and then I'm going to erase. So I'm going to end up with y equals 2 times negative 4 squared plus 8 times negative 4 minus 3. Well, negative 4 squared is 16, and 16 times 2 is 32. 8 times negative 4 is negative 32 minus 3. Well, these cancel, leaving me with negative 3, so y equals negative 3. So why don't you take just a break for just a second, and then come right back, and we'll finish. So then you can check where your values in this table and make sure that you have the same things that I have. Okay, at negative 3, y is negative 9. At negative 2, y is negative 11. At negative 1, y is negative 9 again, so somewhere in between there is going to be my axis of symmetry. And then at 0, y is negative 3 again. And so you can see it's this pretty little symmetrical thing. So I now have a table, and so I have, I have represented this in multiple ways. I have represented it as a function right here. I've now represented it as a table, and now we're going to represent it as a mapping. You have seen a mapping before. It's just been a while. So I'm going I'm to show you one more time. When you do a mapping, you have these pretty little ovals. Hopefully yours are prettier than mine. This represents x and this represents y. And you list all the values of, from the table into your mapping and, and you put them in order. So I have negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and 0 for my x's. Then my y's, I have negative 3. I apologize, we're going to put them in order least to greatest, not you know in any manby-pamby order we want. They're going to go least to greatest. So the smallest one is negative 11, negative 9, and negative 3. And I'm only going to list the negative 9 and negative 3 once because when they repeat it doesn't matter. With the mapping I'm going to draw arrows anyway. The negative 4 meets up with the negative 3. Negative 3 goes with negative 9, negative 2 with negative 11, negative 1 with negative 9, and 0 with negative 3. That's what my mapping would look like. Now if I wanted to graph it, I would plot these points onto the graph and I would connect them so that I had a pretty little graph. So I have negative 4, negative 3, negative 3, 5, 6, see, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 
and then I have negative 2, 11, and then I have negative 1, negative 9, and I have 0, negative 3. So I have this pretty little parabola right here that looks just like this. It wasn't a very smooth curve, but you get the idea. So you have the pretty parabola. Now we're going to talk about domain and range real quick. This should, you should be old for you by now, but you can tell by the graph. It extends on forever. My domain is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity or all real numbers with that pretty funky R you can draw. Parabolas are always going to have a domain of all real numbers unless there are endpoints at the ends of that. Now my range goes from negative 11 to positive infinity, or I can say y is greater than or equal to negative 11 because it is all those numbers. So there are the multiple representations. Now, linear versus quadratic. We're going to have to talk about the difference between a linear function and a quadratic function. I'm going to save this for the beginning of class tomorrow because it will be really quick to go through and I want to make sure I hit all of the other important stuff. So we will come back to that. So we're going to go to the next slide. You have a, I apologize, you have a graph that represents the relationship between the height in yards and the amount of time in seconds a soccer ball was in the air after it was kicked. So this is what the graph represents. We're going to find some values on this graph. And it looks really difficult, but it's not. If you remember this f of 7 thing, this f of x thing, means the same thing as y. So when I'm asking you to find f of 7, I'm asking you to find the function value when x equals 7. So it means I go over here to my graph, x equals 7 right here, and if I want to know what the value of that graph is there, I just go up, it meets the graph right here, so it's going to, you slide over, you can see it is at 6. And so the function value at x equals 7 is 6. Same thing if I want the function value at x equals 4. I go from 4, it meets the graph right here at 9. So the function value at 4 is 9. Now the next one is backwards. Now they say when f of x is 6, find the value of x. Well, this means when y equals 6. Well, y equals 6 all along this line right here. How many times does this parabola meet that line I just drew? Well, it meets it twice, once here and once here. So there are two values for x. x equals 1 right here and x equals 7 right here. So you're just using the graph to find some values and don't let this freak you out. It's just function notation, but it means y equals. And so and when I pr plug something into the parentheses, that's what x equals. We'll get more practice with that. So now evaluating quadratic functions. I'm going to do this first one. The second one is very, very similar, so we should be able to do that when, when you come to class tomorrow, but because they work exactly the same. So given, I guess you need the quadratic function. I'm going to go and grab the quadratic function for you really quick. Okay, so the function that we're going to be dealing with is going to be f of x is equal to 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. It says find the dependent variables when the independent variables are these four. We're only going to do this once or a couple times so you can get the idea. Independent and dependent. If you will remember, independent variables are always x. The dependent variable is always y. So they're asking you to find y when x is these numbers. That means I get to plug these numbers in here for x, and I get to do it four times. So I'm going to start with 3 times negative 3 squared plus 2 times negative 3 minus 5. And then I do the math. Well, negative 3 squared is 9, and 9 times 3 is 27. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 minus 5. Well, 27 minus 6 is 21, and 21 minus 5, oh, let's see, 16. So y equals 16. So the first value that I get is 16. Now I get to do it again, except I get to use 0. But I do the same thing. I do 3 times 0 squared plus 2 times 0 minus 5. Well, this goes to 0. This goes to 0 minus 5. Well, that equals negative 5. So the second value of my set is negative 5. And then I repeat with 1 and with 5, and I get my four numbers, and I am done. We will practice this second one when you come to class tomorrow so that you can see how it goes. But hopefully that gets you started, and I will see you guys when you come to class.